Hello, I am Ivanka Tringovska, a scientist from Marica Vegetable Crops Research Institute in Bulgaria. One of my research topics is fruit quality of tomato. Though I'm not really a breeder, my today's talk will be on breeding of tomato. But to prepare myself for today, I use the help of my colleagues who are among the best, if not the best, tomato breeders in the country. Did you know that one gram of tomato seeds can produce 10 tons of tomatoes? It's an amazing efficiency, isn't it? We have to learn from tomatoes because the main challenge in front of us is to secure our food. In other words, we have to produce more and better food with less resources. And the key word is efficiency. Efficiency in each step in the process from seed to fork, where plant breeding plays a key role. Speaking about tomatoes, what is ideal tomato? Definitely there is no a single answer. This is because there is no one perfect tomato. There are thousands of varieties around the world intended for different purposes. And I am sure that in the creation of each variety the aspiration was towards the ideal. But the ideal has changed over the years. For example, in Bulgaria we have an old variety called ideal. It is still used since people like its taste, but it is susceptible to diseases, so it is no, no more ideal. And uh, if you are one of those who, despite the availability of tomato varieties, do not find the perfect one, the solution is to create it by yourself. Now, imagine you are a tomato breeder. First, you have to set up your breeding goals, but remember, we live in a challenging world. On one hand, consumers demand healthier, more nutritious, tastier and more flavorful tomatoes. On the other hand, producers demand high yield, low cost of the production, while traders care much more about the shelf life. And while creating your perfect tomato, you have to take into account the climate changes that lead to emerging new diseases, the spread of pests, heat waves, droughts, thinking how to combine all important traits in just one genotype, maybe some will give up, but we will decide to continue. Next step is to identify your starting material, because you need a good material. At my institute we put many efforts on examining and describing the collections. Starting material could be wild relatives, land traces, vintage varieties, mutants, introduced varieties, segregating populations. You may look at some available databases, as Harniston database, for example, or at seed banks to identify the parents that fit your goals. And once starting material is identified, you have to choose the most appropriate breeding method. The easiest way to start is to use the ability of tomato to self-pollinate. Let's assume that you have very good variety obtained from your grandmother and you want to preserve it for your children. You can collect and mix together the seeds from the best looking plants. Then these seeds can become the planting stock for the next season. This method is called mass selection or phenotypic selection. It is simple and not expensive, but if you want to improve this variety somehow, for example, to increase the yield, one option is to apply pure line selection, also known as individual plant selection. It involves selection of superior appearing plants, growing progenies for each of them, and evaluation over a period of several years. The best among them is developed as pure wine, which is highly uniform. For these methods, you will need only field, notebook, and your patience. Now, imagine you have very good variety, nice and tasty and productive, but susceptible, for example, to tomato mosaic virus. On the other hand, you have not so nice variety, but resistant to this virus. What can be done in this case? You can cross the two genotypes in order to transfer the resistance to the susceptible variety and, your, uh, and make your nice variety also resistant. This breeding technique is called hybridization and become dominant in the breeding of self-pollinated species during the 20th century. In hybridization process, parents have to be carefully selected so that the new hybrid has to combine desirable genes. Usually crosses are made between two parents, but three, four or more parents are, uh, crosses are also common. 
The hybridization is based on some other breeding techniques as hybrid breeding, pedigree selection, back crossing, etc. But to apply this method, you need some more knowledge. There are many examples, many guidelines available in the internet how to um, do artificial hybridization and I will go very briefly through it. As you know, each tomato flower has male and female reproductive structures. This means any tomato plant could be used as a mother or a father. Left to their own, tomatoes will self-pollinate. But since we want to cross two different varieties, we have to prevent self-pollination by emasculating the flower used as a mother. Then we have to transfer the pollen to the female stigma from the father plant. Soon we will be, you will be able to see the fruit formation. Seeds from this fruit will give you F1 hybrid plants. Now you have several options. If you are satisfied with your F1 hybrid, you can stop here. This method is called hybrid breeding in which only the F1 hybrid plants are important. It is very common to see that the F1 hybrid is superior in performance compared to the parents. This phenomenon is called heterosis. In my institute, we apply this uh, method in the breeding uh, program dealing with large fruited land races that have small number of fruits per plant. And our goal is to increase the fruit number, but to keep fruit size and fruit quality as much as possible. <clears throat> now, let's assume another case. Your desired trait, for example, TMV resistance, is in the genotype that is not among your favorites. In this case, you can apply a pedigree selection. That means that you have to cross the parents, let the F1 progeny to self-pollinate in order to receive F2 population. In F2 population, you will see the biggest diversity and you start your selection process in F2 population. You have to select individual plants carrying the desired trait, then, then self-pollinate each individual. You have to repeat this process several times and in F6 generation you will obtain nice pure lines with desired TMV resistance. Another is the case if your parents are completely different from each other. For example, one of the parents is a wild relative with unique resistance. You may go for back crossing. That means repeated crossing of hybrid progenies back to one of the parents, the better one. And the general principle is that the new genotype will be improved for only one trait. After five or six back crosses, the progeny will be very close, if not identical, to superior parent. With bonus, the desired trait. You can see on the figure on the right, introducing the TMV resistance in one land race using a back cross program. Now you may want to speed up your selection process and you might be interested in using molecular markers or to apply so-called marker-assisted selection. Molecular markers are a specific fragments of DNA that can be identified within the whole genome. The fragment is connected to the gene coding our desired trait. In the Becros program, we need to make progeny testing in order to select individuals carrying that trait which means additional vegetation cycle on each back cross, but applying molecular markers, we are able to select plants without progeny testing. I would like also to mention mutation breeding as a possible method. When the desired trait is not available in the germplasm, it can be induced by artificial mutagenesis. A disadvantage here is the low frequency of getting the desired genetic change. Another two very advanced methods are genetic engineering and gene editing. Genetically modified crops are made by inserting genes from foreign genome, while gene editing means targeted changes to the same genome. Both methods offer a huge potential to create super varieties in short time, but for now they are not very well accepted by our society. Breeding process is usually accompanied by some tissue culture techniques. Some clonal variation or chaos culture is used to exploit existing or to produce new genetic variability. A whole functioning plant can be developed from just one cell. 
After hybridization with wild relatives, it is common to use embryo culture to rescue the hybrid progeny. In some cases, micropropagation is needed for rapid vegetative multiplication. Applying this and some other breeding techniques, except genetic engineering and gene editing, we at Maritz Institute create tomato varieties intended for different purposes. Whether they are perfect, I cannot say. There is always something that could be better. But I would say that we create tasty varieties, because fruit quality has always been important for tomato breeders in my institute, and chemical analysis of fruit quality compounds are always accompanied by sensory testing. Now, at the end, let's go back to the idea of the perfect tomato. In summary, the perfect tomato will look like this. Easy to cultivate, nutritious and tasty, adaptable to changing climate, and resistant to all forms of stress, heat, cold, salt and drought, as well as to pests. Is it possible? I read somewhere the following. When it comes to what's possible in tomato, we've only scratched the surface. And now I would like to thank uh, the organizers, the collaborators and you for your attention.